video. This that guy just said. This works better than where I work. Okay. He doesn't run the radio. He's just on it. All right. Ever, ever, come on. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. All right. Hi, Salt Lake Gaming Con. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> Person I think I've known. I, looks familiar. I'm your brother. Stand up. Identify yourself, sir. Uh, Chris, Higgins. Chris Higgins. Hello, Chris. My All right, look. now sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, y yeah. I <clears throat> Everybody's looked the same since the stroke, Carrie. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I know. It's unfortunate. Damn Obamacare. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, thank you for coming out to Salt Lake Gaming Con to see our, our little show that we do. <clears throat> uh, I, I, will, I will say this. We pull bigger crowds at Comic-Con. And I blame, I blame myself. <laughs> I blame myself because we don't have enough gaming stuff on the show. We should do more gaming stuff. Start Very with gaming stuff, Tony. Get this crowd whipped into a frenzy with gaming. Uh, I'm going to fix that. <laughs> yeah, Destiny I like Tetris. Coming out. <laughs> that's, that's Nintendo Switch is cool. Go PC gaming. That's what you got? Yeah. That's it? <laughs> Wait, boom. Yeah, that's, that's the PC gaming yeah. crowd in a nutshell. See, that's something that I'm learning here today yeah. is, is that, is that I'm, I'm a console person, and they're disliked, apparently, by PC people. Why is that? Why can't we all just agree that we like the same stupid fucking game? Why can't we just agree? Because huh? most of the Wait, time it uh, is the same game. It is the you same play, game. You play all games on your PC? No. I, just play, I look at porn. Yeah. <laughs> I play no game. games. <laughs> Except for, like, with people's hearts. That's all, those are the only games I play. <laughs> He's Adventure's Last Stop. <laughs> Adventures first and last stop. All right, well, let's uh, uh, get some questions ready. We'll, we'll take your questions here toward the end. You're all, you're all spread out. I feel like you should all I don't know, what, a pile on top of each other. Yeah, yeah you know. come in. Come close. Just make us feel more um, <laughs> special. Comfortable. <laughs> Y'all come in. Yeah, not you. You stay right there. But you. <laughs> no, no, you stay right there. You. No, you. You stay right there. You're fine. Everyone else, <laughs> everyone else, come in. All right. Everyone else, come in. <laughs> all right. We, it's nice. It's cool in here, and we'll we'll talk about dead people first. Oh. We didn't introduce ourselves. Oh yeah. I guess we should. Let's see. Uh, over on this end of the table, is too tall. Trill Tony Quad T producer designated driver of the program. Welcome him. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, check me out on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> At Quad T Tony or on the Gadget Spot podcast with Excitable James, who's over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jaron and Owen. All right. <clears throat> Let's uh, go down to the other end of the table. Lee George Cade, everyone. Hi. <laughs> I, am, I am the master of gaming con. Welcome to my domain. <laughs> You've been here most both days, right? No, I I, I just did today. Just today? today You've been I'm on every panel. <laughs> every single one. Yeah, it was uh my favorite was uh well this one. This <laughs> one's my favorite. So. No, I actually had the best turnout for a diversity panel ever. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. Well, we talked about switch. Overwatch and it was cool because Overwatch is a great game and for many reasons. But anyway, uh thanks for coming out to Gaming Con and uh check out my restaurant Frisch Eatery and uh all that details they're all online at frisheats.com i don't want to i don't want to slow down the, the flow of this 45 oh, it's, minute it's podcast too late. it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I could go on for like 40 minutes just on <laughs> just on vegan eating alone but that's a different podcast He's the jerky king of salt lake yeah, yeah. <laughs> fits in your mouth oh and and thanks jay Whitaker, for giving me yet another useless slogan <laughs> <laughs> that i'm stuck with for the rest of my fucking life <laughs> Jay couldn't be here tonight, by the way. He apologizes. So He's naked hiking somewhere. Probably. <laughs> Can you yeah. believe that shit? It's fucking I mean, that's stupid. Weird, right? I, don't I think it's weird. Like, I would be afraid I'd get a uh, thistle in my dick. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like a, a tick in your butt crack. 
<laughs> you know? So really, the, the secret here is if you ever want your own Jay Whitaker, just dangle some keys in front of him and walk in the direction you want him to go. That's yeah. right. Oh, that tumbleweed's getting near my scrotum. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a thistle in his dick. He's Shannon Barnes. <laughs> yeah! So uh, I had a pretty good time. I've only been here for like an hour. Uh, what, did you, what did you guys do? We bought stuff at a booth. <laughs> So we bought butterfly so I, knives. No, so, okay, no. So like, I picked up butterfly knives. I'm like, woo, butterfly knives. And I go, nope, it's a fucking bottle opener. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I got to own that, apparently. <laughs> and then I decided to buy uh, brass knuckles that say USA. Yeah, so I bought some too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's our brass knuckles buddy, uh, Nate. He bought us a couple of beers. I actually asked the guy who's selling them, I go, hey, can I can I get it for 10 bucks? Like, I already bought the knife. And he's like, nah, man, that, that shit's going to sell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually bought them out of uh, USA Brass Knuckles at the booth. I bet you they're that's, not that's real brass. The name of, that's the name of the company is USA Brass Knuckles? Sure. No, I know, it's just like, my favorite thing is that the sticker on the bottom says China. China. <laughs> <laughs> so the main th th this booth, that booth in there, it's the best booth I've ever seen at a con. <laughs> they sell swords and... Um, Battle axes. Battle axes and Chinese stars. Furry handcuffs. Furry handcuffs for your f special lady. It's like a 13-year-old's wet dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm happy to know you got these brass knuckles made the same place Trump gets his red hats done. I was going to say, just yeah, like that's right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to frame these. These are the most beautiful things I've ever seen. <laughs> like every time I hit somebody with one of these, I'm going to go, Bigly! Oh. All you do is have to hold this up and just be like, this is why the world hates us. <laughs> 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 the best is it's absolutely Nate, true. Nate, who bought us the beer. Yes. His Thank friend you, Nate. Carl. Hi, Carl. There's Carl. Uh, Carl, Carl uh, comes walking up to, <laughs> to Nate when we're in the line to buy the beer, and I go, Nate, is this guy bugging you? And I start fucking around. And just for a second, Carl's eyes are all big. He's like, the fuck? This guy's pulling a butterfly knife on me. <laughs> <laughs> And he thought, wait, it's Adventure's uh, Last Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's this shit and Fox's gluttony challenge. Is this why the world hates us? Yeah. <laughs> one of the many, one of the many it. reasons. Anyway, come see my stupid pub quiz Wednesdays, Lucky 13. <laughs> it's great. I'll open your bottles for you. I'll open you up. <laughs> you want to see? Yeah. You get your muscle memory back from being 12 years old. Oh. Uh, when I was in that street gang? Yeah. These yeah. are the original fidget spinners. Shan you know? Shannon and, and, <laughs> That's Shannon and Butterfly I. Butterfly knives. We were in an Irish street gang, a magna called the Bloody Shamrocks. <laughs> oh, see, you know, bang your knuckles for a second. Well, it's because the weight's off from the no, fucking bottle no, opener part. That's because you don't remember it. Oh, I'll just have to fuck with this for a while. <laughs> anyway, he's my. He's why America hates us. He's my. Doing my best, coach. He's my brass, <laughs> he's my brass knuckle buddy. Brass knuckle buddies. America, 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 America. America. <laughs> Jimmy Martin, everyone, welcome. Hi. Oh, uh, <laughs> I love saying it on this show. Watch me on KSL. <laughs> it's weird. They love it too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, God, I think we're done with it now, but we just did uh, Spider-Man interviews and. Yes. It was uh, the last episode. Who's seen Spider-Man so far? <laughs> oh, we're gonna talk it's about terrible. That. It's <laughs> just awful. Yeah. I saw it twice just so I make sure I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we have a host. Well, where's your stuff? Did you get all your stuff? Out? Case, I, I feel there's like there's way more. too many fucking things to name. I, I don't. Well, no, it's, it's Big Movie Mouth Off on Big Comcast. Big Movie Mouth Off on Comcast and Slug and Arrow and Geek Show and Mediocre Show. and. All right. See? Okay. Let's just get to the host. Hi, everyone. It's Carrie Jackson. Uh, Monday through Friday, 6 to 10. America. X96. <laughs> Dot com. Brass Knuckles <laughs> USA. I don't even think they're brass. No, that's what the, the lady that I just bought a beer from, she goes, do you think those are made from real brass? I go, no, they're made from straight up patriotism. <laughs> there's, some, there's some kind of metal. I wouldn't say they're brass, but there you go, folks. True, but I, I and Lee actually pointed out, I think if we actually tried to hit somebody with these, it would break our fingers. It might. <laughs> it would just crumple it into might. your fingers. I'll All right. The incident. Do we have liquor? Anyone have liquor in here? No? What? Good. Raise a glass. Good. You got the memo. Good. Raise a glass. Joan Good. Lee. Oh. Joan Lee, everyone. You it know makes what that me means, scared. Carrie. It makes me scared. Yeah, me too. You know what I that means. Stan, like, Stan's not yeah, far behind. Nice. <laughs> that could happen. No, statistically speaking, people who are in marriages for more than 20 years, they 
tend to, I mean, you're talking, what, 63 years? 69 years. 69, 69 years. years. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Stan's, Stan's probably done by the end of July. That's bad news, but it's also good news because he's on my Deadpool. Oh, I right. know. <laughs> they um, made me pick people I like. That's, uh, Why did you pick that's Trump? Trump. Carrie's <laughs> always got the silver lining. That's why I've only stayed married, like, just a little over 10 years. That's good. Oh. Yeah. So, Carrie, if you if you win the Deadpool, does that mean we have another retreat at Stein Erickson coming up? <gasps> yes. Uh, there's there's got to be some money involved in that, We need to do right? that again. We need to do some that again. Some sweet, sweet death cash. So, Joan Lee and Stan Lee married for 69 years. She was 95 years old. Uh, she suffered a stroke earlier in the week. It was hospitalized. She was... She used to be a British hat model. That's a thing? That's a yeah. thing. Well, it was in the 40s. She was a British hat model. <laughs> Famous for her huge head. <laughs> uh, Say it right, huge. So, so here, oh, here's, right. Here's, how they, here's how they met. Um, a childhood sweetheart wed another woman. Joan Clayton impulsively married an American soldier during World War II and moved to New York where she was extremely unhappy. And that's where she met Stan Lee. Hello! Smiling Stan. <laughs> Doesn't care if you're married. Moved on in. Uh, a cousin of Stan Lee's wanted to set up uh, 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 the struggling writer with, with this other hat model that worked at the store. <laughs> Another hat model. Another hat model. Stan's got a type. He had a, yeah, he definitely had a type. So he These says, are my hat model friends. <laughs> so he says, when I was young... There was this one girl I drew. The body, the face, and the hair. It was my idea of what a girl should be, the perfect woman. And then when I got out of the army, a cousin of mine knew a model, a hat model at this place called Laden Hats. He said, Stan, there's a really pretty girl in there named Betty. I think you'd like her. She might like you. Go ask her to lunch. <laughs> so I went to this place, and Betty didn't answer the door. But Joan answered. She was the head hat model. <laughs> <laughs> the head hat model? None of this sounds real. I, I, I would say if either of you guys invited me to go meet a hat, hat model, I'd probably think I was going to get mugged real real quick. <laughs> hey, hey <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy, you want to go meet a hat model no. after this? <laughs> no. I want to introduce you to a hat model. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I took one look at her, and she was the girl that I had been drawing all my life. And then I heard that English accent, and I'm enough for an English accent. So... In those days, the quickest way to get divorced was... <laughs> what? Well, oh, she was married. Model. She so was already married. So marry Joan. Right, right. She was married to the soldier. Sure. The quickest way to get divorced was to move to Nevada and stay for six weeks to establish residency. <laughs> <laughs> then Holy you can get shit. a quickie divorce and a quickie marriage on the same day, which is exactly what they did. <laughs> so Smile and Stan has had game forever. <laughs> she wasn't the first one either. I probably not. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, she, uh, in some versions, uh, Lee credits Joan with inspiring him to the origin of the Fantastic Four. He was depressed about his career. He had dreams of becoming a serious novelist. The state of the comics industry in the 50s was dominated by Westerns war, and romance novels. War comics, science fiction, and romance, horror. stuff he didn't like. And uh, Joan told him, before you quit your job, why don't you write one comic that you are proud of? And that's where the Fantastic Four came from. Hmm. So there you go. To Joan. Joan! Thanks, Joan. She, she was also the voice of Madam Web in the 1990 Spider-Man cartoon. Yes, she That's was. That's the truth. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Spider-Man, and because Stan, you know, we wouldn't have Spider-Man if not for Stan and Jack and those guys. Let's talk about the movie. <laughs> Homecoming 2. The um, sequel? They're looking at a five-movie storyline for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. This is according to Kevin Feige. Five Spider-Man movies? Yes. Or five movies Five he's movies in? that he will be in. Oh. Uh, Civil War was the first. Homecoming. Avengers Infinity War. Mm -hmm. Then the other Avengers movie. And then Homecoming 2, or whatever they wind up calling next, it. Yeah, I, I believe the sequel will be Sadie Hawkins. <laughs> 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 That'd be weird. And yeah, well, it'll be his junior year. He says it'll be a five-story journey for Peter in the way that the events of Civil War directly inform the opening of Homecoming and his state of mind as he goes back to high school. So, too, will the events of the next two Avengers movie as he continues with high school. The original 22-movie uh, arc ends with the untitled Avengers in May of 2019, and then two months later it will be Peter and Spider-Man that usher us off 
into the aftermath of how things proceed from there. So Marvel Studios has plans for Spider-Man. So what do you think? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I loved it. I think um, I I loved Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker. I think he was a great Peter Parker. But this is the first time we've seen Peter Parker in high school. With he always starts in high school and is like, oh, two years later. Now he's fitting for himself in college and whatnot. But this is a a kid who who wants to be a part of something bigger is what I've said. But <laughs> what gets me about this movie, I keep thinking about it, is that you have Michael Keaton threatening a 15-year-old <laughs> in the back of a car. He says, yeah. I'll fucking kill you. Yeah. All right? <laughs> like, don't, don't fuck with me. Like, I will. And he's, and he's holding a fucking gun. Like, yeah. he, like to a child. Like that. <laughs> this kid can't even drive yet. And you've got Michael Keaton threatening him. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> well, I think, and, and I will say, like, and, and we talked about this earlier, I think Keaton... It's sinister Beetlejuice Keaton. Well, and I think he's probably the best, one of the best movie villains they've had. Next to uh, Loki. Loki yeah, and yeah. Purple oh, yeah. Man. And him. Yeah. Purple yeah. Man, yeah. Sure. I, I found him more frightening than Loki. <laughs> Loki yeah. never threatened a child. No, Loki's, <laughs> Loki's just a sociopathic god, right? But mm -hmm. this guy this guy actually had some really clear-cut, defined... I loved that at one point he was trying to explain how the 1% screwed him out of everything while he's driving his Lexus down the road. <laughs> um, yeah. But but I mean, seriously, a really super believable character. I I've said it w a couple of times now. It it is my absolute favorite MCU movie, and it might be because of the heat stroke. It could have been any number of things, but <laughs> I I absolutely loved that movie. Like I just walked out of there. It wasn't emo Parker. I was so tired of <sighs> emo Parker. I didn't grow up with emo, emo Parker. I grew up with Peter Parker, who loved being Spider Man, and who but Peter Parker always had his problems. He always had his issues, but they weren't. It wasn't. Oh, I'm so tired of being the Spider Man. Oh. That's true. He he kind of loved his powers when I was a kid. At least that was the thing. You read well, Spider Man. That was his thing, right? Like he be like overwhelmed. I'm like I'm gonna go web slinging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go, and I'm just gonna. Other kids masturbate. The he, you know. Yeah. And there's, <laughs> I mean, but this is the first time I, at least for Spider Man, I didn't even recognize it till the second time I saw it. Was he said like there's so many things like ooh awesome cool nice ooh gross ew like that I mean like there's so many like he's he's a 15 year old I mean like I, that's what I love about it, and uh, I think Tom Holland nailed it nailed it and oh yeah I what's great about it though because I, I know he's I think he just turned 21. But like you're gonna see this kid grow into this character, I think, if they keep him around for five films, like to, to a mature Peter Parker. I mean, but he's an immature high schooler. <laughs> I hope they don't mature him right away. I'd like him to stick around in high school a little bit longer. Well, I heard that the the like the, the next homecoming is gonna be his sophomore year or junior, and like it's gonna be each year that he's going. So yeah, because he's a he's a sophomore this year, isn't he? I think so. Or is he a freshman? I think he's a sophomore. He was a yeah. sophomore. I think he's a sophomore. Yeah. So you'll have junior and senior year. So, yeah. And, then they'll kill him off. So you, you finally saw war and <laughs> well, that's right. I saw it with you. <laughs> with there with, that's right. So never mind. I loved it. I thought it was great. I had a. I have a. My. I. One of the few people that has a minor complaint. D and didn't take. Is it this just, a spoilery complaint? <sighs> I'm just gonna say, and and for people who've seen it, it won't be a spoiler. Actually, it's not a spoiler. Okay. I. Okay. <laughs> look. Um, Sounds like a spoiler. No, and. Uh, I didn't like Karen. The whole oh, Karen the sequence, I did not yeah. like that. Oh, the talking to the suit? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I loved that. Do you know who the, who the voice did of the you? suit was? Yeah, it was Jennifer Conley. Mm -hmm. but, like, I loved that. It kind of took me out, and it felt like Spy uh, Iron Man light to me <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> and, you yeah, know, but, but, no, but, but, suit, not, but not enough to not like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know. Are, but, you, like, are you shaming him? Can I say the greatest testament of the show? So I went and saw it. With um, two, yeah, I saw it with a, a fifteen and sixteen year old. Uh, the fifteen year old, autistic. Need older friends. And uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> somebody else my age was there too. But, he's, but no, the the fifteen year old uh, is autistic, and he doesn't talk very much. You've met him, and like eggs met him, and um, he doesn't talk very much. But like that whole battle. The first battle, like <laughs> the the battle on the uh, Staten uh, Staten Island ferry, ferry, right, where this kid had the biggest smile on his face, and he looked at his mom and he said, "I'm happy, <laughs> I'm smiling," <laughs> and he like in and and uh, 
you know, his sister was losing their, they're both huge Spider-Man fans. That's their, their favorite character. And they were losing their goddamn shit the whole movie. Mm. So, I like, and it was great. Tom, Tom Holland is Peter Parker and he is Spider-Man. Yeah. That's my, all I gotta say. My biggest thing about it, it's not my review, I will never take credit for it, but I read this and I was like, you're absolutely right, is that you take all the Spider-Man out of it, it's a great John Hughes film. It's a, a oh, kid Oh, John in high Hughes school, wishes he could have you know, made a movie this good. You what? John, I was going to say, John Hughes wishes he could have made a movie this good. Have you not seen Home Alone 2? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, also saw, I also saw Baby's Day Out. Yeah. They made another Home Alone movie? They forgot him again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> That's when I started hating Trump because he's in Home Alone 2. Oh, yeah? Doesn't help Kevin out. He couldn't even point him in the right fucking direction. Yeah. It's I don't his know hotel. what the lobby is, kid. <laughs> It's Bigly over there. I don't know. Great lobby ever. <laughs> Good luck to you, Kevin. Yeah. I assure you when you find the lobby, it'll be the greatest, most dramatic lobby <laughs> that you have ever encountered. Uh, all right. But oh, here's the other. Oh, geez. Oh, what was that? swag. Oh. The thing I really. This is dirty laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> would you? Would you please? Would you? Would it's you watch that? Pants. <laughs> no, the, the, and you know what else I loved is that Spider-Man had a struggle. Right? Like him trying to climb up the goddamn uh, Washington, Washington Monument. Monument. Oh, I didn't really was that tall. <laughs> right? He's just uh. like, this is so fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah, I don't know. And there That's was just like so many w- iconic moments. And like just like little throwaways, too, for us like oh, Spider-Man yeah. nerds. Yeah. But, I mean... I- I think they nailed it in the sense like we didn't need another Uncle Ben death scene. No. And and the only thing he says is, you know what uh, you know, Aunt May's been through. That's all you need to say. Mm-hmm. In a one sentence knows. you you just went right over it and like, we're good. Because everybody knows. I right. think that was and the attitude going. Yeah, Aunt May's gonna be knows. just fine. Oh, and his yeah. his buddy, dude, that Filipino kid. Ned. <laughs> Ned. Oh, Ned, Ned was, was great. Ned, Ned was great. And there's so many shout outs to uh, villains that didn't show up, and you got some origins for some villains that were in the movie that were kind of great. And uh, yeah, oh, no, they, there was a total foreshadowing to the Sinister Six in this thing. Yep, and and you see you see the Prowler just mm. for a second. Yeah. Is that yeah. Donald? Yep, that Donald yep. And he little, even says and he uh, my, talks my, about <laughs> his nephew. My nephew. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I also I also like how they tied into the fact that Spider Man's been on the Death Star. That he's been on it? Well, around it. <laughs> that was one of my favorite questions. That he built it. He built it. It wasn't built by Wookiees. It was built by Spider-Man and his friend Ned. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked the, the kid Ned, I go, how many of those did you get to break? And he said seven. Oh. <laughs> Imagine the kids that were just like, all right, we need you guys to build this Death Star. Okay. And then we're going to drop it on. Anybody who's built a big Lego set, like one that big knows the pain. And their and their parents know the pain of what happens when you go in to wake your kid up the next day and you step on Legos. So they just stick in your foot and you uh, die. Cat and I built the uh, the Simpsons house and she dropped it. And, oh. <laughs> and it was like in sections. I was like, that's never getting put back together, <laughs> ever. Uh, well, the other news that we got uh, this week, and I I only bring it up to uh, to say it's just a rumor. Uh, they have cast um, Randall Park to join the new uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. This is the guy from Fresh Off the Boat. He's the, the dad on Fresh Off the Boat. He's a funny guy. He's very funny. Egg texted me this. It was so exciting. He was actually in the movie I saw yesterday. That was, it was a pile of shit. What? The house. Oh, he was in that? Yeah. Sorry. Ugh. They can't all be gems. No, they can't. <laughs> see, a lot of people don't think about that being a film critic. You have to see shitty movies, too. Uh, like They're he, more fun to talk about sometimes. <laughs> Jimmy was like at noon. He's like, hey, you want to go see the the house? And I was like... No, I gotta cl- I gotta clean my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather do chores. That, that's what <laughs> you go said. see this alleged comedy. Uh, but he is. Uh, there's rumors going around that he's being cast as Jimmy Woo. Oh my God! Could you believe? Can you even believe? I hope. But <laughs> I've you know me and I've I've been aware of fake news before there was ever fake news because I do this. Right. I don't like the sources on this one. So I'm just saying it would be cool. <laughs> for, the, for those who don't know. Uh, <laughs> we don't get our those, news from him. For those who don't know, Jimmy Woo is a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who starts uh, a special division of S.H.I.E.L.D. called Agents of Atlas. Oh. Uh-huh. And this is a cool group because you've got a spaceman 
Uh, you've got uh, what? What was the girl's power? What was her? Uh, there was Namora, Namor's Namor's That's sister. That's right. Namor's sister. Saturn boy, who's a um, the yeah. space man. He's a space man. He likes sex. You've got, you've got, what is it? M thirteen, M eleven. The robot man. Yeah. The killer robot. That's his name. He's like a nineteen fifties looking robot. Yeah. Well, they're they're all Silver Age comics characters. They're yeah. All from the and all from the 60s. And, of, and of course, Gorilla Man. Oh, he's a gorilla that talks like a man. <laughs> <laughs> he also wears a suit, and when he runs, he holds Uzis in his feet. Yeah, yeah. he can shoot Uzis with his feet. Oh. Now, that would be great if yeah. it is, but I, I don't like the sources on this, because I would love to see an Agents of Atlas movie. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to pray to Crom that it's true. Pray to Crom that it's true. So I, I don't know why you don't use Tawilla Review for all your sources anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They've been dead on about everything. <laughs> uh, so were there any fights over the PC versus console gamers today? Uh, at one point, I made Tony and James dress up in gaming boxes and fight each other, and, yeah. but it was a draw, because Tony's got the size, but what? James fights dirty. I so. won. You say you won. I was there. You got the reach, but uh, excitable yeah. James is scrappy. Yeah. yeah. That's true. He fights dirty. Bounce. <laughs> He's always bouncing around. Uh, we came to the consensus that video games are awesome, and no matter what you play, you're probably having a great time. That's right. That yeah. should be the consensus. Yeah. That's a good time to be a gamer geek. Uh, it's going to be a better time to be a gamer geek, and that the singularity will be fueled off of our tears. <laughs> that was. <laughs> well, in Oklahoma, they were fighting an age-old fight. <laughs> Jerome White, 23, was arrested last week in Oklahoma after a heated debate about Star Wars and Star Trek turned into a real assault. I saw this. I got really excited when I saw this on CNN. <laughs> so whoever won, does that put the debate to rest? Tony, they all lost. Come on. Oh. <laughs> According to Oklahoma City Police, White and his friend were hanging out in an apartment when the pair started chatting about which series was better. The friend, clearly flustered, told White... You're just a trick before walking back to his room. I, is that an Oklahoma put down? Is that uh, like a whore? I don't know. <laughs> White then reportedly followed his friend back to his room and shoved him to the ground. After a quick back and forth between the two of them, White wrapped his arm around the guy's neck and started choking him. Wait, wait, wait. This is going way too fast because if they're, if they're our kind of geek, they probably had to take a couple breaks, uh, breaks to get their breath back. <laughs> <laughs> You know, high-speed chase back to the bedroom. As the man was about to pass out, he pulled out a pocket knife. Ah! A pocket knife? Was it a bottle opener? Yeah. And that made White let go. Oh. White was arrested for assault and battery, as well as other unrelated charges. Now, I, I went to the TV channel that this was reported on, and they didn't make it clear... Who was the Star Wars guy and who was the Star Trek? <laughs> right? That's like a really important part of the story. That's I feel the most like. important part of the story. Well, and, and seriously, I mean, you don't you don't just argue Trek versus Star Wars. You got to figure out what genre of Trek you're talking about. Whether it's prequels versus DS9, or if it's uh, you know, is it, is this is this Force Awakens versus Voyager? I mean, that's well, a clear cut winner. Well, <laughs> right. I know well, Voyager's really good. Yeah. Well, yeah. You like clearly oh. clearly these two weren't as nuanced as you. <laughs> so, well, Daisy Ridley or, you know, Catherine Say Janeway. It. I just, Ewoks uh, are cool. Say it. Say it. <laughs> Jimmy, it sounds like we need to head to the south and fucking figure this out. <laughs> With your bottle of Oklahoma's the south. <laughs> Isn't Oklahoma the south? No, it's like middle shitland. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so Sorry, I don't pay attention. It's it's middle shitland. I'm ready. He's a, but he's a school teacher. I just, America. I <laughs> just, just want to say he's a school teacher. I, that's not part of fourth grade core. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's Utah history. I don't know where shit is. Uh, I mean, my brass knuckles have skulls on them. Oh, they're pretty sweet. Uh, <laughs> all right. Here's something that Jimmy's going to have to watch. Rampage. <laughs> that's who. Uh, coming soon. Uh, studio announced Thursday it will release Ang Lee's clone assassin movie. I'm okay with that. Gemini Man on October 4th, 2019. Will Smith will star as an aging assassin who tries to get out of the business but finds himself in the ultimate battle fighting Will Smith, who is 25 years younger. Ooh. <laughs> well, yeah. 
As long as it's not fucking Jaden, I don't care. But here's <laughs> But here's the twist. Here's the twist. He'll be it's actually a remake of Face Off. So at one point, Will, Will Smith is going to sh- trade faces with Will Smith. <laughs> and they're going to be fighting each other, and they're not going to know who's who. And his wife's going to be confused. <laughs> Jade is like, what's going on? And I was like, oh, I don't know which Will Smith you are. I are hope you're getting two checks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. I like Ang Lee. I like Will Smith. Okay. Yeah. I just the just idea when his son comes along, he's a dick. Young Will Smith fighting old Will Smith, because that means... Will Smith's going to have to play himself old. Uh, are they going to age him? Because Will yeah. Smith isn't really old. Uh, they're, they're, it's, you know, <laughs> with the computers they do, you know? <laughs> the makeups. The makeups and the computers. So Okay with it. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, let's see. i got one more story, and then we'll take your questions. If you have any, line up, please. Uh, one more story. And this is actually something that you should go see. <laughs> uh, 2017 is the 40th anniversary of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh. And they're bringing it back to theaters. Oh. <laughs> well, they have mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I should say it. <laughs> well, the nice part week. is is if they serve the mashed potatoes in a popcorn bucket, you can just turn it over and lift the bucket off, and you got your devil's tower. This means something. <laughs> it's for, uh, for one week, starting September 1st, uh, it will be uh, re-released in theaters. It was released November 16th of 1977. Follow up to Jaws, and happened just a few months after another little space movie called Star Wars was out, which almost starred Richard Dreyfuss. Yes, really? yeah, Actually. he was he was one of the runner. He was like one of the finalists for Luke. But here's huh. the, here's the problem that I have because I'm old enough to remember this. They re-released Close Encounters in theaters. I think it was like five or six years after it opened. That's true. The special edition. Mm-hmm. Because everyone was dying to know what happened to Richard Dreyfus after he got on the ship. No one was dying for that. No. <laughs> so my question is, is will it be the special edition or classic flavor? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> we may never know. All right. We'll know in September. Ah, yes. Who are you? Identify yourself. And what is your question? Hi, my name's... Can you hear me through this? I don't know if we can hear you or not. I can hear him. I could just talk. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of the microphone, Tony's going to Tony's gonna figure this one out. Test. There we go. What's your name? Uh, my name's uh, Sam, and I was just wondering, I don't know how many of you uh, watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I absolutely love this season. Uh, what was your th- feelings about how the show ended and how it'll connect to Inhumans, and do you think there's any chance that it'll, they'll have any relation to S.W.O.R.D. or if they'll introduce S.W.O.R.D.? Well, they kind of make you think that at the end, don't they? Spoiler, if you haven't watched. Does, 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 Agent, Shield does Agent Brandt show up? No, it's, it's, I think it's been renewed. Okay. I'd yeah. have to check. It it's, did get it's renewed. It's coming back. It's, so I guess Inhumans is going to be on, and then, and then uh, Shield. Shield is going to come back after. Okay. I, I read that the last half of the season, there are a couple episodes that actually won a whole bunch of awards for like excellence in screenwriting, acting. And well, I, lo- I loved what they did with Ghost Rider. I'll say that. Yeah. I, and you know, I used to hate that show. Yeah, I know. I used to hate it. I loved this season a lot. Oh, yeah, with the, with I, the, the robots. And the robots, the, the, you know, the agents of Hydra. And then, yeah, at the end, I'm like, oh, are they in Agents of Sword now? You know? That whole Agents of Hydra thing was genius, though. I mean, it's all in a computer, so we can do whatever we want. Right. It, it was just a, a brilliant writing exercise, I think. But yeah, they kind of lead you to believe that it's going to be S.W.O.R.D., because he's up in space at the end. But you never know. And and I only trust the... What paper is it? The Tooele? Oh, the Tooele News Review. Tooele News Review. I only trust... <laughs> That's where I get all of my geek news. It's all from Tooele. Yeah, it's it's actually an offshoot of the Magna Green Sheet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the big nickel. Yep. Yep. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you get real close to the mic. Hey. It should be on. Hello. Jimmy, look who it is. It's our drinking buddy. And he's our brass knuckle buddy. Brass knuckle buddy. I saw that movie. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> That idiot made like a hundred bucks off of us. When our powers combined. Oh, who's the idiot? <laughs> <laughs> the idiot? The idiot who followed oh, us. That, that idiot made so much money off me. <laughs> he said, actually, when we bought all this, he's like, you guys just paid for my 
daughter's gymnastic lessons this week. <laughs> I, I just want to know, did, did he bite every coin you handed him? <laughs> How much did these cost? Or is it really cheap gymnastics? $70 bucks. for it. I'm just kidding. $15 I think each. we spent 30 bucks. That's yeah. really cheap gymnastics lessons. Yeah. <laughs> right. Not worth it. He must be from the South. He uh, must be. <laughs> no, she's, she's Anyways, middle shitland. <laughs> middle shitland. My, na- my name is Nate. Hi, Nate. Uh, my question for you guys is, out of any of the... Um, any of the universes you decide, what vehicle would you guys want to have? Vehicle? Yes. Car. Car. The bike, evil Knight Rider. That's what you want. What, what was the evil Knight Rider? His name's Car. Is a car. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, just, I forgot his name. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you were the Knight Rider fan. Oh, oh I God. love Knight Rider too. Mm. Oh shit. Uh, I'll take the Blues Mobile. <laughs> No, with megaphone on top? No. No, the one that the one that can magically jump like it did at the end. Because they were on a mission from God. God was clearly manipulating the entire situation. Right. From it above. To, and it has to be a car? Because it oh, was a vehicle for many he said universe. Vehicle. vehicle. I would take uh, Rick Sanchez's spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. They that thing could do anything, by, huh? Yeah, powered by a microverse battery. <laughs> A bunch of slaves in the bedroom. <laughs> I actually just watched an episode of that. He goes, this smells like watched, garbage. I just rewatched that episode again. And I'm just like, it's so this good. is so fucked up. Yeah. 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 I, God, I love that show. That, that was actually going to be my answer. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 w- I would either want, like, if I could have two, but I know I can only have one, then the debate would be between Luke's and Comp T65 X-Wing or uh, Speed Racer's Mark V because that's a badass car and it has saw blades and it has a drone bird that flies off and it can jump. <laughs> and it's got the treads on it. And sometimes when you're fighting like the car acrobat team, you have to make sure you got something that can plow right through them because that middle car is the linchpin. You got to get it first. <laughs> there w- <laughs> I've been thinking about Speed Racer for a long goddamn time. Clearly. And yeah. I know I know the day is going to come that I'm going to have to save the world by riding around the world in the Mark V. <laughs> and I know that the car acrobat team is going to be there. And those bastards, man, the way they start, I mean, it's always like the first car jumps up and it's just floating there while the others stack up and down below it. And you're like, ah, they don't even understand physics. <laughs> and so how do you fight a racing team that doesn't understand physics, right? Well, you fight them with the power of chaos and the Mark V because it's amazing. <laughs> there was uh, back in the days of uh, Lidsville and uh, H.R. Puff and stuff, the Croft Super Show was what it was called, Sid and Marty Croft. Yeah. And there was a, a show on, it was Saturday morning, it was a live action thing, Wonderbug. Wonderbug, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the, the conceit being is that there's this old junky dune buggy, which they called Schlepp Car, I think, <laughs> and it had a magic horn. And when you honk the magic horn, it would turn Schlepp Car into Wonderbug, which was this red, shiny dune buggy. But and both cars had a face. Both cars had a face, yeah. and they would kind of talk. They had their own language. But it, they never actually drove the vehicles. They were in front of a blue screen the whole time <laughs> with the fan blowing them, and they would do their... Li- go online and look for it. It's, and it's just tragic. If you watch any... <laughs> any Sid and Marty Croft show, you just have to remember that acid was a hell of a drug. It was. <laughs> Well, it, well I because Tony said Rick Sanchez's spaceship, I'm probably going to change mine to um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Quinjet. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, that's good, that's too. It's a nice ride. I mean, it's kind of showing off a little bit. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think my go-to is the DeLorean. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. But... Uh, but you mentioned a car with a face on it. I would take uh, from Family Guy the Peter Copter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forgot about the Peter Copter. <laughs> it just has a giant face on a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I'd either take an ATAT. That'd just be fun. <laughs> it'd, be sl- it'd be slow as shit, though. Yeah, but. No, 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 no. Adats are not slow. They're, they're you seen one run? Yeah. We have. Well, I appear. Um, <laughs> I was I was fighting one on the Mark V the other day. <laughs> it was the At At Acrobat team. The At At Acrobat. Yeah, team. Yeah, there's like ten of them all stacked up on each other. And and, but like, I'd also like a speeder bike in its belly, so I could pop yeah, okay. out just really some fuck Any, out some Anybody shit. out there play uh, Battlefront, the Star Wars Battlefront? Yeah. 
tell tell them how dangerous the speeder bike is. I mean, oh, I'd be dead in a week. Seriously, you'd be dead in like two minutes. Those things, <laughs> those things have three primal weaknesses: rocks, trees, and Ewoks. And gravity. <laughs> and they apparently have no like first gear. It's it's, it's like all <laughs> right, it's, right. It's just like me. It's like a date with George Lucas. <laughs> Adventure's Last Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the name of this episode. <laughs> hey, guys. You all know me. Uh, ah, it's Sarah. Hi, Hi. Sarah. Sorry, Sarah. So we are at Gaming Con. So Get let's close say to a that gaming microphone. company comes up to you today and says, we're going to give you all the money you need to create the game of your dreams. What do you create? Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> <laughs> the Revenge. The Revival. <laughs> yeah, but, but no, knowing Jimmy, he'd make sure it was the extra text edition. <laughs> I really want to read this board game so hard. So, so if, we're, if we're, creating, we're creating the game of our dreams, and we, our, game of your dreams. our budget is endless. Well, that's a really stupid thing of that game company to do to this group. <laughs> um, anyone? Tapper. Um, <laughs> uh, we need a new version of, of Tap Tap. VR. Burger time. <laughs> VR. Yeah. yeah, that's a really kind of lousy thing for a bartender to do to himself. You know, former bartender, you're like, you know, I really miss bartending. I want to <laughs> play a virtual reality game where I'm a bartender again. <laughs> <laughs> I <Bring> hate myself. <laughs> So that logic, I, I want the custodial uh, VR game where it's like, hey, you're going to scrub some toilets in virtual reality again. You know, you could we, just scrub some toilets. We could yeah. co-create a game where you drag corpses to the morgue. <laughs> <laughs> we were so good at that job. Oh, That's so seriously. That they. Job. Oh God. That was another job they had. Yeah, Shannon yeah. and I did a group lift on a dead guy once. Um, <laughs> yeah, Shannon dropped his end. <laughs> Well, no, because, because like they put his head wrong on the pillow when they yeah. put him in the thing, and then when we moved him, he goes, <gasps> <laughs> and steamed up that little strip yeah, in the middle yeah. of, the, of the body bag, and I was so, like, "Fuck this!" and I ran out. I'm making seven fifteen an hour. It's a zombie. Yeah, it's not the first time I was stuck standing with half a body in my hand. <laughs> oh, jeez. So the answer is uh, Mega Man. We would all just think Mega Man. <laughs> Tony. Oh, I'm going to stay on my Rick and Morty kick in a Rick and Morty RPG. Just throw money at Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon. Do it. Do it. I want, I want to build this game where I'm driving the Mark V. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to fly in spaceships and shoot at shit, and I can't even find that game. Oh, yeah, you can. Huh? Come to my house. I have ten of them. Oh, okay. I want to make a new version of Choplifter, but it's got the Peter Copter. Peter Copter. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think it's time for Spy Hunter to get updated. Oh, yeah. Spy Hunter. Spy Hunter was a great game. Now, would you, keep, great. would you keep the same song? Yes. Yeah. yeah the Peter Gunn thing, you got to have that. But I make, sure that, I make sure that sometimes evil trucks showed up to throw stuff at you. <laughs> <laughs> and then every once in a while, you could upgrade to the Mark V. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Uh, one thing I want to say to you guys is there's a video on YouTube of the new guy who plays uh, Peter Parker. Tom Holland. Yeah, and he says that he went into the movie theater when he was a kid when the first Avengers came out. He never thought that he would be playing Spider-Man today. Oh, it's it's got to be a dream come true for him. Oh, yeah. You it's, know? I, I think it's in my interview with him that yeah. I said, because uh, he said to Tobey Maguire was his Spider-Man. And so he said, looking down, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a kid who's probably four or five right now looking at him, and that's his Spider-Man. He goes, and he was actually saying, like, I am not going to take this lightly. Like, this is a role that people admire and adore. So, yeah. I, I don't think when I saw the first Avengers, I didn't think Tom Holland was going to be Spider-Man either. <laughs> <laughs> he was nine. <laughs> <laughs> and also, how she was asking about you, the game that you would design. Which console would you do it? Would you do it on PC, Xbox? Well, if we're spending this much money, we want it for, do everyone. It for everything. Yeah. No, just Put on the on Apple Two E. Yeah. You, you drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of well, I, I think we wanted it on the Dreamcast, right? It's Dreamcast. Yeah. <laughs> we're developing. This, this will be the best Commodore Vic. Oh, we're, we're actually going to develop a game that the Jaguar can run on all of its ports. <laughs> Turbo Graphic 16. Yeah. Neo Geo. <laughs> All right. A couple months ago, I uh, posted on Facebook when you guys requested questions. Yes. I uh, put out the challenge to create a superhero on the spot that was original. Today, I'm going to do the opposite create a villain that's original and his uh, motivation. 
<gasps> Trump because he's an asshole. <laughs> John, how do you beat that? How do you beat Trump? He's he's he is more ridiculous than any cartoon supervillain that we've oh, ever carried. That is fake news. The cartoon Stop that. That's not what the Tooele paper says. <laughs> I get all my facts from the Tooele paper. Ah, uh, let's see a, a villain. villain? Well, a good a good villain has to think he's the good guy. I mean, that's that's, right. that's kind of the root of it. That's right? Exactly. That's like my favorite. So awesome. My favorite kind of villain is the guy who thinks he's right. Yeah. Like he's yeah. like like uh, Kingpin in the Daredevil series. Like he's I, like I just need to cleanse the cities. Mm-hmm. I, I I love uh, I love injustice because Clark goes dark because he's going to fix the world, right? <laughs> so uh, and you think about it, that's that's the tragedy. Excuse me, I'm talking. This is my microphone. You don't have one. Um, the tragedy of that whole thing is that uh, he, he has the power to enslave the world, right? So that's that's the storyline there. So I think somebody like that would work really well. Hmm. Uh, I think my villain would be called the misogynist. <laughs> <laughs> and he just really just wants to help women understand how the world works. <laughs> oh. oh, and his sidekick, the mansplainer, could the show man The mansplainer. <laughs> You tell her how it works, mansplainer. Well, actually, <laughs> if you look at these instructions, this fedora deflects estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, yeah, I just think my answer is just the, the guy who thinks he's right. <laughs> it's the creepiest well, one. And that's, and that's Trump. <laughs> well, he is right. He's, just, <laughs> he's doing a good job. He's doing his best. Give him a chance, you guys. He's new. <laughs> You've had these brass knuckles for just a short period of time, and already you're affected by it. That's how I voted. I just went. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we got our. Fr- <laughs> we'll just walk in and go, that's where we're voting. <laughs> you know who I want. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that's how we got our first Donkey Kong president. <laughs> he just stands on a building and throws barrels at shit. <laughs> 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 All right, Kevin, are you able to a- ask a quick oh, question? I am, but just real quick. Do you have any kind of regimen? Should I start drinking to remember the names of people? Should you start drinking to remember the, the names of yeah. people on the Geek Show? Especially you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know each other really well, so we all yeah. remember each other's names. Even when we're drunk, we remember. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Let's, get, let's get one more quick one yeah. before, uh, before we uh, wrap up here, because... Yeah, it's a uh, one's directed straight to Jimmy. Oh shit! So yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, so you're Easter. I'm ready. Egg? <laughs> America. I'm gonna go get some now. Wait, hold on. <laughs> so your Easter egg, you asked the director, can you, without spoiling, like, like the what I saw, plot, like where was it? What Try he thinks he saw. Well, I don't think he, he saw what he. What I he don't think I saw. saw what I saw. But what's fucked up is that Tom Holland. Made it official. He's like, he's like, oh, I know you're. I'll say what what I think I saw is that at the end of Spider-Man, they're pulling into uh, the Avengers headquarters. Uh, Parker's going up there for a possible uh, press conference. I thought I saw the Milano taking off. See, that's right. not. But I don't no. think I did. No, you saw. Now you what's saw fucked up you, though is that Tom Holland apparently did see the Milano taking yeah. off, and I don't know. I don't know. What, well, I don't know what the hell he saw. He's Spider Man for fuck's sake. He just oh, didn't want. He just didn't want to look uncool in front of you. Oh, what's, 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 what's yeah. fucked up is uh, there's is like, something in there. Yeah. <laughs> and Tom saw it. This is a hell of a way to find out Tom Holland's a level 17 gaslighter. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> that's exactly what you saw, Jimmy. Just like our president. All right. And on that note, thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, come and see us. We'll be doing. We, we, seriously, we draw much bigger crowds at Comic Con. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing it at Comic Con in September. So come and see us then. Thank you so much. Thank you. And don't forget to vote. <laughs> <laughs> America. <laughs> <laughs>